find the work done by the force field f vector of x comma y equals xi plus y plus 2j. In moving an object along an arch of the cycloid, r vector of t equals t minus sine ti plus 1 minus cosine tj between 0 and 2 pi in terms of time. So as we can tell, you can evaluate this work done by using the work formula, where work equals the line integral of f vector as a function of t dot, let me make sure the dot is big here, r vector prime of t dt. This is the main formula we are going to use. So fortunately, since we are integrating along time dt, we are already given the boundaries between 0 and 2 pi, so we don't have to worry about that. However, we do need to parameterize f into a function of time, because as we can see, it's in terms of x comma y. And also, we're going to have to take the derivative of the r vector, since we need r prime of t, not just r of t. So first, let's translate f of x comma y into time domain. So you take the f comma x comma y, and you set that equal to, well, let's put it in vector form right now, x comma y plus 2. So as you can tell, the first comma term is i, and then this will be a j vector function. So to turn it into the time domain, f of t, we now look at the x term here. However, we're already given a time function vector of r. So we can see that x becomes t minus sine t, because that's also a part of the i vector. So all we have to do is plug in t minus sine t for x and 1 minus cosine t for y. So x is t minus sine t. And here we have y plus 2. So first we need y, 1 minus cosine of t. However, there's also a plus 2, so don't forget to add that portion. And, you know, simplifying this one more step, we get f of t equals t minus sine t. That stays the same for the i component. However, we can see there's a 1 plus 2, so we can simplify that to 3 minus cosine t. So now we have our f vector of t settled. Now, moving on to r of t, we need to take the derivative. I'll do that over here, where r of t, I'll write in vector form, is t minus sine t comma 1 minus cosine t. You don't have to do this, I'm just doing this to make it a little more clear which portion we are doing at a time. So now taking the derivative or prime of that, we get r prime of t equals with respect to t, the derivative of t is 1, derivative of sine is cosine, don't forget that minus. Doing it here, derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of cosine is negative sine, but negative times negative will be positive, so it turns to just positive sine t. Now we have all the components to complete the integral. So work equals the integral, don't forget it's between 0 and 2 pi, as illustrated by the problem, of the vector function f of t, which we figured out here t minus sine t, comma, 3 minus cosine t, dot, r prime of t, which we figured out was 1 minus cosine t, comma, sine of t, dt. Evaluating only the integrand portion, we can see that work equals the integral between 0 and 2 pi of, let's take the dot product, we're taking it between t minus sine t and 1 minus cosine t, since those are both the x or i direction. So think of it as just using FOIL properties, where first outside, inside, last, where we take t times 1, which is just t. Now t times minus cosine t minus t cosine t. And now for this term, minus sine t times 1, so minus sine t still, plus sine t times cosine t, since both the negatives cancel out, plus sine t times cosine t. 
Now moving on to the y vector or y direction. 3 times sine t, still positive, plus 3 sine t. Minus cosine t times sine t, so minus sine t times cosine t. And that is everything, so we can finish it off now with a dt. Fortunately, you can see that the sine t cosine t cancels itself out with the plus and minus term, so we can just cross these out. And that leaves us with work equals integral between 0 and 2 pi of t minus t cosine t. We can see also that there is a negative sine t and positive 3 sine t, so that simplifies to plus 2 times sine t. And that's everything, dt. And now we're going to have to evaluate this integral. Separating it will make it a little easier to understand, where we take work equals integral between 0 and 2 pi of t dt minus the integral of 0 and 2 pi of t cosine t. You can see this will be evaluated by doing parts. There's no other way to do it dt plus integral be between 0 and 2 pi of 2 sine t dt. Once we figure this out, we have our answer. So let me do the first one. The integral of t with respect to t is just t squared over 2. And that is evaluated between 0 and 2 pi. And let me do the t cosine t down here. So if you want the integral of t cosine t dt, you're going to have to do integration by parts, where u and v have to be taken. So let's take u to be t, since that simplifies down to just du equals 1 dt, or just du equals dt. You want to kind of leave trig last whenever you do parts. That's one of the last things you have to prioritize. And we take dv equal to cosine t. And v is the integral of cosine t, which is just sine t. In this, evaluating by parts, we know that this will be uv, which is t sine t, minus integral of v du, which is sine t times dt, so sine t dt. Now let's throw that in here officially. Remember that there's a minus in the front, minus. I'm going to be putting braces here to make it more clear. The t sine t is also between 0 and 2 pi, don't forget that. And subtract by the integral between 0 and 2 pi as well of sine t dt. And that leaves us with the last term, integral between 0 and 2 pi of 2 times sine t dt. We know that the integral of sine is just negative cosine, so we have to take the negative on the outside minus 2 stays constant, 2 cosine of t evaluated between 0 and 2 pi. Now let's simplify a little bit. Work equals, we will plug in the upper bound 2 pi as t, so the 2 pi squared quantity is 4 pi squared over 2, and we don't have to subtract by the lower bound since we know that will automatically be 0 in the numerator, so it's just the upper bound, 4 pi squared over 2, minus, let's try to put in some boundaries here, this will be plugging 2 pi for t, we got 2 pi sine of 2 pi minus the lower bound of just 0, since we know 0 will be t, minus 2, I'll leave that on the outside, and you're plugging the 2 pi in for t here, so it would be cosine t, so cosine 2 pi minus the lower bound cosine of 0. And we are almost there. Simplifying this, we get 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 pi squared. 
and we can see here that sine of 2 pi is effectively equivalent to sine of 0, which is 0, so this all turns to be 0. So we don't even need this term. Minus 2 times cosine of 2 pi is cosine of 0, which is 1, and cosine of 0 is 1, but you take the negative, minus 1, which equals 2 pi squared, minus 2, times 0, you get rid of that term, and that leaves us with our final answer of work equaling 2 pi squared. There are no units attached, so we don't have to worry about that. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments below, and good luck.